Hi there. I was recently given this lovely old OS Max FP40. A really great engine. Now, it looks like it's worked really hard in its time, but it needs a good cleaning before we can get it in the test stand and run it again. You can see this is all gummed up with castor oil. Not only the fins and the head, but also the, the silencer, the muffler. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's nothing that won't clean up. And there's no damage or very little damage to the engine, no damage to the muffler. There's just a little bit of a mark on the prop driver there, which we can clean up really nice. So I think we've got a really good engine here that will clean up lovely. It, it's still got the original 3A OS carb. See, 40 designation. Now the only thing that's been changed is we've got the needle here, which has been extended with this uh, spring, just to make it easier for outside of a, a model. Now these OS Max FPs, they were introduced in the mid 80s, I think it was 1986, and I believe that originally they had a cast iron piston and a steel liner. And then a ABC version came out in kind of about 1993. Now this to me, if we can look in the port there, I don't know whether if I bring that closer in, you can see. I think that looks like an aluminium piston. But until we get it apart, we won't know for sure. Well, I'm really looking forward to stripping this engine down, and having a look inside and seeing what condition it's in, and also, seeing what kind of piston it is, so it'll give us an idea of the age. Now, it should be a fairly easy process. There's no ball bearings in this, as, as far as I'm aware, it's plain bearing. I'm gonna film me taking it apart, but I'm gonna speed the film up because the process in real time could take 20, 30 minutes, something like that. So I would rather do it quickly, but showing the whole process just considering time constraints and not wanting to make this video too long. Well this came apart really quite easily, no problems at all. Even the cylinder liner pulled out relatively easily. A little bit of persuasion by putting a wooden stirrer in through the exhaust port and just winding the piston up just to give it a little bit of a push and that slid out lovely. Plain bearings as well means that the crank just slides in and out without no problem. Often it's a little bit more work, well it is a little bit more work when you've got ball races to remove. Now the piston looks in quite good condition. A couple of light scores on the exhaust side and the inlet side, but I don't think that will affect performance. Doesn't look overly used, it's, it's got carbon on it, but I, I think this will run again nicely. Now a couple of points to note, I put a slight scratch mark on the back of the conrod. Don't know whether that shows up, just with a needle. Just so that I know which way round it is. So when I assemble the engine, I get the piston the right way round and the conrod 
the right way around. It, they wear, it's been wearing, so you want to get it the right, right way for the wear. But also, sometimes um, conrods are offset, so that if you get them the wrong way around, they can catch on the crank. So, really important to, to get that just right. The other thing you might have noticed is you've got the air bleed hole here. Before I touch the air bleed screw, assuming this engine was set up right and was running right, when before I dismantled it, that air bleed will have been at the right position. So I had, I used my torch and I shone a bit of light up through the Venturi and had a look in there with a magnifying glass. And I don't know whether I can just show the light in there, but I just was interested as to how far that hole was blocked with the air bleed screw so that I could set it up with that kind of same kind of um, sized hole and it was almost 50% covered it was perhaps about 45% covered so about 55% open so I'll try and mimic that when I uh, rebuild the engine well the piston is an ABC piston it's not magnetic so this engine's going to date from kind of post 19 93 so a slightly later version but still in good condition so except those score marks obviously maybe had a bit of a bumpy landing sucked a bit of dirt in at, at some point but I don't think that will affect performance if you saw when I dismantled the exhaust I spent ages finding the right screwdriver in fact it was the fourth screwdriver I got to it's really, really important when you're taking these engines apart to get the right fit if it's going to be a screwdriver because it's such a shame when you see old engines with chewed up screws. It's nice to get a good firm drive on it and take it apart. Anyway, I'm going to get this cleaned up now. I'm going to put it in my ultrasonic cleaner with some jewellery cleaning fluid and uh, once I've done that, we'll come back and have a look at the components and I'll build it back up, ready to get it running. I'm not going to show the cleaning process. If you're interested in that, then have a look in the description below this video and there'll be a link to a short series I did looking at the OS Max 20 where I show my whole cleaning process, what I do to clean up an engine. Lots of different ways of doing it, lots of different views out there, but I'll show you how I do it anyway. So. Let's get this cleaned up. As you can see, this is all cleaned up nice now, and uh, I'm really quite pleased with the way it, it's come up. Looks lovely. I've made a new gasket for the back plate, and if you're interested in making your own gaskets, have a look in the description below this video, and there'll be a, a link to a video showing how I, how I make the gaskets. Easy, easy done. Now, the head, polish the outside edge, so that looks nice. And uh, the cylinder and the piston, I haven't done anything to it. it. It's a lovely fit in the cylinder, really pinches at the top. I've left the carbon on the top, I haven't touched the cylinder. Don't want to mess with that because I think it's got good compression and I don't want to risk uh, doing anything that, that, that will harm that. So I've, I've left well alone and it's clean, it doesn't need fiddling with. So what I'm going to do now is start to assemble this. The muffler I will put on some jointing compound, uh, a rubberized, I think it is, jointing compound, high temperature, around the, the join there, because if not, we'll just end up with the, the muffler dripping oil. And I'm going to use this product, which is uh, held tight, which I, I really like, it, it works quite nice, it's easy to use. When you first put it on, it may smear on the aluminium and you think, gosh, that's not gonna come off. But if you get a little bit of um, methanol and just rub it and that'll clean up nicely. That's before it sets. It is, uh, it is fuel safe and, uh, and heat safe. So that well, should be a good product to stop that from, uh, from dripping. So I'll build, start to build this up now and uh, I'll keep the camera running 
but I'll just speed it up a, a little bit just so it's, it doesn't stretch out too long. Well, it feels great to get this lovely old OS Max FP back together again, especially when it's looking so nice and so clean, such good condition, and now it's just ready to see how it runs. You may have noticed when I put the nipple back in on the muffler, I put on some of this blue thread lock, so nothing permanent, just something that will stop it vibrating out or the, the risk of it. I, it probably wouldn't, but I, I always put it on anyway. So all that's left now is that I put on a prop and see what the compression's like. Right, well I've got the prop on and the compression sounds lovely. Just listen to this. Feels lovely and smooth. I'm dead excited. I can't wait now to get this in the test stand and see how it runs. Right, well I've got it clamped in the test stand, so it'll be interesting to see how it runs. I've got a 11 by 5 prop. I kind of wanted to put a 10 by 6 but I just couldn't find one this morning. So I've put this 11 5 on and I think that will be absolutely fine. I've got a OS number 8 plug and I'm going to be running it on this Model Technics Duraglow, which is 5% nitromethane and 16% oil. That's a synthetic caster mix. I think it's 9% uh, synthetic and 6 or 7% uh, caster. But anyway, let's see how it runs.
Well, that ran lovely. It was a little bit rich at first, a little bit of a splutter, but I leaned it up with the air blade screw, I just turned it half a turn, and that seemed to make all the difference. And nice transition after that. Lovely tick over, lovely idle at about two and a half thousand RPM, which was really nice and really steady. And what I think we went up to about 12,000 RPM, 11 and a half thousand, something like that, which I think for this 11 by five prop is pretty good going. So I'm really pleased with this and I can't wait to get it in a model and see it up in the air. So anyway, I've really enjoyed running this this morning and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Thank you.